Section twenty point one, crystal field theory. B, ligand field stabilization energies. In an octahedral complex, electrons often occupy the lower p two g orbitals. Three of them. D x y, d y z, and t z x. Well, the reason is simple. Electrons prefer to occupy the lower energy orbitals first, and then these two are higher energy orbitals, d z squared, and d x squared minus y squared. And these each orbitals are zero point six delta O above. The barycenter. These three t two g orbitals are zero point four delta O below the barycenter. So of course the electrons would prefer to occupy the t two g orbitals first. Now let's look at this uh, one, two, three, six different scenarios. Uh, when we have only one electron, two electrons, or three electrons. They occupy the lower energy t two g orbitals, right? One electron, two electrons, three electrons. When you have three electrons, because of the Hund's rule, the three electrons occupy the three different t two g orbitals. So one electron in the d x y orbital, one electron in d y z orbital, one electron in the d z x orbital. No electrons occupy the higher energy e g orbital, and then we can compute the L F S E ligand field stabilization energy. When you have only one electron, you put it here. It's zero point four delta O below the barycenter. Therefore, we have negative point four here. When you have two electrons, each has negative zero point four delta O. Therefore, we have negative zero point eight. Three electrons. Well, one point two delta O in total below the barycenter. Uh, what if we have eight electrons? When we have eight electrons, we first fully occupy this t two g orbitals. So we put six electrons here, and then we have to put two electrons in the e two g orbitals. All right, because again, each of this Three, the orbitals can only occupy、uh, can only accommodate two electrons. So in total, six electrons can be accommodated by the three t two g orbitals. So now you have two electrons in the two e g orbitals, and one in the d z squared orbital. The other in the d x squared minus y squared orbital. Because again, if you have two different orbitals, allow your two electrons to occupy. There's two different orbitals to minimize the electron-electron repulsion. Okay, now in this case,、uh, these six electrons are below the barycenter by 0.4 delta O. 0.4 times six, we get negative 2.4, so it's 2.4 delta O below the barycenter. And then we have two electrons in the e g orbital. And if you look at this e g orbitals,、uh, they are 0.6 delta O above the barycenter. So 0.6 times 2, well, you get 1.2、uh, in total. If we look at all eight electrons, there is negative 2.4 delta O stabilization. There is 1.2 delta O destabilization in total. The L F S E is negative 1.2. This is the ligand field stabilization energy. We have a D8 electron configuration. On the transition metal center. What if you have nine d electrons? Well, still you occupy the lower energy d t two g orbitals first. So you have six electrons. Fully occupy the three t two g orbitals, and then three more electrons. They have to go into the higher energy e g orbitals, and then we compute the l f s e. It's negative point six delta o. What if you have ten d electrons? Well, this is actually simpler. You have six electrons in the t two g orbitals, four electrons in the e g orbitals. All orbitals are fully occupied, and then the stabilization and destabilization completely cancel. You get zero L F S E. 
So I did not discuss uh, the four d electrons, five, six, seven d electrons. So what about those uh, uh, scenarios when we have four, five, six, seven d electrons? Well, uh, in this case, we can have lower low spin electronic state and high spin electronic state. Uh, so what does this low spin and high spin mean? Uh, when all electrons are paired, the electron spin number is zero. All right? And then when you have unpaired electrons, let's say when you have two unpaired electrons, uh, these two unpaired electrons prefer to have the same spin, either same alpha spin or same beta spin. Uh, in this case, we have a high spin. Uh, electronic state. So now let's look at the low spin uh, case first. Uh, in the low spin electronic state, we try to minimize the number of unpaired electrons. Uh, let's look at the uh, uh, this situation when we have four d electrons. Okay. Uh, in the low spin state, we pair up those electrons in the lower energy orbitals. So we put all these four electrons in the T to G orbitals. And there's zero electron in the EG orbitals. And in this case, we have one pair electrons that occupy the same orbital. And then we have two additional electrons. Each occupies a different orbital. So in this case, we have two unpaired electrons. Uh, the spin number is 1. Because the spin number of each electron is 0 0.5, and then we have two unpaired electrons, so the total spin number is 1. Now let's look at LFSE. The LFSE in this situation is quite simple. It's four electrons multiplied by the LFSE of uh, just the difference between this T2G orbital and the barycenter, which is negative 0 0.4 delta O. So four electrons times negative 0 0.4 delta O, we have negative 1.6 delta O. Uh, when we have five electrons, we can put them all in the T2G orbitals as well. In this case, it's five times negative. 0 0.4, we get negative 2.0 delta O as the ligand field, uh, ligand field stabilization energy. Six electrons, uh, they can all be placed in the three T2G orbitals. All right, again, dxy, dyz, dgx, they can accommodate six electrons. So we can put all six electrons in this three orbitals to achieve uh, this um, ligand field stabilization energy of negative 2.4 delta O. Uh, what if you have seven electrons? So again, we can uh, first fully occupy the T2G orbitals, and then there's one more. We'll have to put this uh, seventh electron into one of the two EG orbitals. And then we have stabilization here. We have destabilization here. In total, it's negative 1.8 delta O as the LFSE when we have seven D electrons. All those are low spin cases because we try to uh, put all electrons in the lower energy orbitals first. And that results in the maximum number of pairs of electrons and the minimum number of unpaired electrons. So when the number of unpaired electrons is minimized, we say this is our low spin uh, electronic state. Now let's look at the high spin cases when we have four, five, six, or seven D electrons. Uh, over here, this is high spin cases. Now again, if you have four D electrons, we do not have to put all these four electrons in the lower energy T2G orbitals. We can put three of them there, 
Uh, and then the fourth electron, it can go into the T2G as well as the low spin case, but it can go into the EG orbital as well. In this case, in the high spin case, uh, the fourth electron goes into this EG orbital, one of the two EG orbitals. And in that case, well, if you look at F LFSE, it's going to be 3 times negative 0 0.4 plus 1 times positive 0 0.6. In total, it's negative 0 0.6. What if we have 5 electrons? Well, they can occupy the 3 T2G orbitals and 2 EG orbitals. 1 electron in each of the 5 orbitals. All right, so 5 electrons, 5 orbitals. In this case, this LFSE is 0. Uh, when you have six electrons, um, in this case, to maximize the spin, uh, we occupy this T2G orbitals first with three electrons, and then two electrons go into the two EG orbitals, and then we have one more. And this one more electron goes, well, of course, into the lower energy T2G orbital. And then you will have at least one pair of electrons. Well, inevitably, because you have six electrons, five orbitals, inevitably you'll have at least one paired, one pair of electrons. So let's put four electrons in the two, T2G orbitals and two electrons in the EG orbital. The stabilization is negative 0 0.4 delta O over O. Now what if you have seven electrons? Well, for the high spin uh, scenario, you need to put three electrons in the T2G first, and then two electrons in the EG orbitals, and then you have two more. Uh, and then that means you will have at least two pairs of electrons. So you put these two uh, final electrons in the T2G orbitals. You have five electrons in the lower energy T2G orbitals, and two electrons in the higher energy EG orbitals. The stabilization is negative 0.8 delta O. So this is 5 times negative 0.4. This is 2 times 0 0.6. So from these two tables, you have high spin. So if you look at high spin, this case, and then you look at the low spin case. Uh, if you somehow compare, uh, maybe I should just put them in on the screen simultaneously. You can see over here, this is uh, negative 1.6 when you have 4D electrons. Negative 0 0.6, negative 2.0, 0, negative 2.4, negative 0.4, and then over here, negative 0.8, over here, 0, negative 1.8. So over here, you can see the LFSE is more significant in the low spin cases only because you try to put the maximum number of electrons in the lower energy T2G orbitals. Over here, you are trying to separate those electrons. And that means you are not trying to uh, minimize number, the number of electrons in the lower energy T2G orbitals. Therefore, you have a uh, smaller LFSE. So, can we just say the low spin electronic states are always favored when we have 4, 5, 6, or 70 electrons? Uh, the answer is no. So it is true that the LFSE, the ligand field stabilization energy, is maximized uh, in the low spin electronic state. But there's another factor in the low spin state. You, you try to uh, occupy the T2G orbitals first, and that means you have more pairs of electrons uh, in these cases. All right, now you just imagine we have five guest rooms that correspond to the five d orbitals. All right, of course you can accommodate, you know, between zero to ten guests if each room can accommodate up to two guests. So now let's say we have five rooms. And then we have four, five, six, or seven guests. 
All right, and then on the first floor you have three guest rooms. On the second floor, you have two guest rooms. Well, of course, just to minimize uh, the energy wasted on climbing up the stairs, well, you can arrange all four, five, six guests in the three guest rooms on the first floor. And only when you have seven guests, you send one guest to the second floor, right? It's just to minimize the energy wasted on climbing up the stairs, right? So in that case, well, of course, low spin states are preferred. But now let's think about this. What if your guests hate each other so much they fight, and energy is going to be wasted in those fights? And then, well, in this case, if you have four guests, I want to separate those four guests. I want to just put only three guests in the first floor, right? That will save their energy from climbing up the stairs. But I would like to send the last, the fourth guest, to the second floor to minimize the fight between the guests. What if we have five guests? Well, of course, one occupy each guest room if. They fight each other. What if you have six guests? Well, then, well, four guests in the first floor, right? And then two, I send them up on the second floor. Seven guests, five in the first floor, and two, I send them up to occupy the two guest rooms in the second floor, right? So this is、uh, to minimize. The energy wasted、uh, in the fight between the guests. All right, so there's a、uh, scientific term、uh, for the fight between the guests. It's just electron electron repulsion. So if you put two electrons in the same d orbital, let's say in the same d x y orbital, there's more electron electron repulsion than if you Can somehow put one electron in the d x y orbital and the second electron in a different d orbital.、Uh, what's the magnitude of the、uh, electron electron repulsion、uh, for the three d transition metal complex? I would say it's roughly twenty thousand wave numbers.、Uh, when you have four、um, d or five d. Transition metal complexes because the four D and five D orbitals are larger, so the electrons in the same D orbital, on average, are farther away from each other. So you will have、uh, less electron electron repulsion in four D or five D transition metal complexes.、Uh, but again, just to give you a rough idea, I want to just put this P is approximately. Equal to twenty thousand plus minus ten thousand wave numbers here, so you have a rough idea about how big、uh, this electron pairing energy is, all right? And hopefully you still remember the typical、um, magnitude for the、uh, delta O, this、uh, splitting of the d orbitals in the octahedral complex. Uh, it's also twenty、uh, thousand plus minus ten thousand wave numbers、uh, by coincidence. So if you just have a typical ligand、uh, without any p electrons to donate, without any empty p orbitals or pi star orbitals to accept、uh, electrons from the transition metal, and then roughly delta O is twenty thousand wave numbers. And then, if you have、uh, empty pi star orbitals, such as、uh, the carbonyl ligand or cyanidyl ligand, and then you have a larger delta O, roughly thirty thousand wave numbers.、Uh, what if you have p electrons to donate, like in bromido or aldido? They have additional lone pair electrons to、uh, to give away to the empty d orbitals of the transition metal.、Uh, that will reduce the delta O. To roughly ten thousand wave numbers, so just by coincidence,、uh, this electron pairing energy is roughly twenty k plus minus ten k wave numbers.、Uh, delta O is also twenty k plus minus ten k wave numbers. 
啊 ，4D、3D、3D 啊 ，transition metal complexes。Okay, if you have 4D or 5D transition metal complexes, delta O is typically larger,、uh, because 4D and 5D orbitals、uh, can reach farther and can overlap with the ligands better. So you have large delta O, and at the same time you have smaller p. You have smaller electron pairing energy in the 4D and 5D transition metal complexes,、uh, because again 4D and 5D orbitals are larger. Therefore, even if you put two electrons、uh, in the same 5D orbitals,、uh, they can better avoid each other than in a 3D orbital. All right, get back to this. Get back to this. So we have low spin cases. We have high spin cases. All right. Ah,、uh, this is the、um, the table for the low low spin cases. Uh, when the electron pairing energy is included、uh, in here, so over here again, if you put four electrons in the three t two g orbitals, there's going to be one pair of electrons. When you put five electrons there, two pairs, six electrons there, three pairs, and then three pairs.、Uh, what if you have high spin electronic state? Well, that means we're trying to uh, uh, minimize the number. Of pairs of electrons, so in this case、um, uh, we have、uh, three electrons in the three t two g orbitals and one electron in the e g orbital.、Uh, there's four electrons occupy four different orbitals. There's no electron pairing energy. Five electrons, five different orbitals, zero pairing energy. Six electrons. Well, inevitably you have to have at least one pair of electrons. We put them in the t two g orbitals. And then you have just one p here over here, seven electrons.、Uh, again, for the highest spin scenario,、uh, you need to occupy the five d orbitals, each with one electrons, one electron first. And then, unfortunately, you have two more electrons. You just put them into the lower energy orbitals. In th this case,、uh, you have two pairs of electrons, so you have two p here. So now, if you compare this LFSE of the low spin electronic state and the LFSE of the high spin electronic state, you see two parameters. One is delta O, one is p. Okay, you see delta O and p. Now, which spin state is favored energetically? What I will do is I will just use the LFSE ligand field stabilization energy of the high spin state minus the LFSE of the low spin state, and if I get a negative number, that means higher spin state has lower energy and is preferred. Okay, if the difference between these two is positive, okay, I'm using this numbers minus this numbers if. The result is positive. That means, well, the low spin electronic state has low energy and is preferred. So I'm gonna do the subtraction here. I'm gonna use high spin minus low spin, and I got something like this. All right, for the electrons, the difference is delta O minus p. So as that, you can see. So I'm gonna use this minus this. All right, and then I got delta O minus p, and then I'm gonna use this minus this. I'm gonna use this minus this, and finally I'm gonna use this minus this. All right, so I'm showing you the difference here. It's high spin minus low spin. Four d electrons delta O minus p. Five d electrons two times delta O minus p. Six d electrons two times delta O minus p. And seven electrons delta O minus p. So really, you're just comparing delta O and p. If delta O is greater than p, uh. High spin state has higher energy than low spin state. Okay, if delta O is less than p, the high spin state has lower energy than low spin state. So, here's my summary about this table.、Uh, if you have a weak field ligand, delta O is small, and if delta O is small enough, it's much smaller than p.、Uh, we are certain、uh, it's going to be. High spin state because the high spin state has lower energy. All right. So if delta O is less than p, negative, 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 negative. 
the high speed state has lower energy and thus is favored energetically. Okay, we'll maximize the number of unpaired electrons to minimize the electron electron repulsion. Uh, but what if you have a strong field ligand such as carbonyl, cyanido, triphenylphosphenol? Uh, in those cases, delta O is really large. And if delta O is much greater than P, we're certain it's going to be low spin state. The electrons will occupy the lower energy T2G orbitals first. All right, so the low spin is favored energetically. Uh, now, these two are in general referring to the 3D, 3D transition metal cases. Uh, why is that? Because if you look at 4D and 5D transition metal complexes, they almost always prefer the low spin electronic state. That means in a 4D or 5D transition metal complexes, the other O is almost, almost always much larger than the electron pairing energy because of two reasons. One, 4D and 5D are more diffuse than 3D. That means they can overlap the with the ligand more strongly, more significantly than the 3D orbitals. Therefore, they have a larger delta O. At the same time, they have a smaller electron pairing energy. They have a smaller P. Because again, because 4D and 5D are larger than 3D, the two electrons in the 5D, in the same 5D orbital, can be farther away from each other than in a 3D orbital. So that means you have smaller electron-electron repulsion between the two electrons in the same 5D orbital than in the 3D, in the same 3D orbital. All right, so this is nice. If you see a transition metal complex with a 4D or 5D transition metal center, so it's easy, it's low spin electronic state, Really, you see any exception, you just say, well, it's low spin. You put electrons in the lower energy T2G orbitals in those 4D and 5D transition metal octahedral complexes. So again, when we are talking about this delta O, it's octahedral. It's octahedral. Now let's get back to 3D. So for 3D transition metal complexes, you have to look at the ligand effects. You have to look at delta O uh, when you have CO, carbonyl ligand, um, cyanide ligand, triphenyl, uh, triphenyl phosphenyl ligand. Uh, this is uh, nitrito, kappa N ligand, phenyl ligand. In those cases, you have a larger delta O, low spin. Now, if you have uh, iodido, bromido, sulfido, and this is th thio, uh, thio, I, I think sanato, uh, kappa sulfur, this is kappa sulfur. In this case, uh, you have a smaller delta O. Usually, this delta O is smaller than P. And then, in this case, uh, you would like to have the maximum number of unpaired electrons, this is high spin state. Uh, so overall, uh, we have a summary here. If you have a strong field ligand, such as uh, carbonyl bonded to transition metal center in an octahedral complex, uh, delta O tends to be very large, and then you would like to uh, maximize the number of electrons that occupy the lower energy T2G orbitals. But if you have uh, weak field ligands, uh, such as bromido or iodido, and then in this case, uh, delta O is pretty small, and you would like to separate the electrons as much as possible. So you would like to have uh, one electron occupy a different uh, d orbital first, unless you have more than five d electrons, right? And then in this case, the high spin electronic state 
is favored.